Hey everyone! In this video I wanted to see how far I could get using only 3D AI Studio, from generating a concept image all the way to a fully rigged and animated 3D character. The team over at 3D AI Studio actually gave me some free credits so I could try out some of their new features, which was really cool of them. I've been using their pro plan for a while now, which is about 30 bucks a month. We'll start with Image Studio to create a character from text prompts and then use the image editor to make a few adjustments. From there we'll take that image into the Image to 3D tool to generate a model. Use the texture painter to refine materials and finally try out their new rigging and animation beta to see if it can hold up in Unity. The goal here isn't to make a perfect character, although as you'll see I can't resist making a few tweaks. It's to see how close these tools are to a full end-to-end -end pipeline. Let's get started! So I'm going to start here in Image Studio and choose the Generate function. And they've got a lot of different models here, so let's try out the Flux Pro first and see what we can put together. So basically what we're building here is um, kind of a, a female hero character, and I tried a few different prompts. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted yet, so I uh, put something in there that's sort of like a bandit, um, you know, with the typical uh, wording that I usually use, you know, symmetrical, T-pose, rig ready. And the first result didn't turn out so well. Uh, it wasn't really showing the entire body there. Uh, so I tweaked some of the settings a little bit, um, and I went down into the advanced section down there, and it uh, looks like you can change the image size, so um, I decided to give portrait mode a try. And you can see it looked like it was still clipping uh, the legs off in some of these, but um, this one looked okay, but it wasn't quite the style I was really looking for. So I decided to give another model a try. So this time I gave the uh, Character Forge um, one a shot to see what it could produce. and. Uh, this one seems to be geared more towards characters, so I thought, well, let's give it a try and see what it can give us. So I'm doing four images at a time and just going to choose uh, auto for the image size on this one. So let's see what this gives us. And all right, so this one's doing, you know, the A T pose that looks pretty good. And um, yeah, the model overall looks pretty solid. Uh, it's just really not quite the style I was looking for still, though. So I'm going to hop back over here again and um, Give another one of these models a try. This time I'm going to try the Image Gen 3. That one's at the top, so maybe that means it's good. <laughs> we'll find out here. So this time I'm just going to do one image to see how it looks. And uh, okay, well this is definitely more the style that I'm looking for. And again, uh, the pose looks good. It's got full body. That one actually gave a front and back, which is kind of nice. Um, so let's go ahead and play around with this a little bit. And I'm really liking the look of some of these. Um, in fact, the one in the bottom right there, I think, is almost exactly what I was looking for in terms of this uh, hero model here. So almost like a, um, a Zelda-like kind of character. So we got this nice little uh, load into image into 3D button right here. So I can just click on that and it'll immediately bring us to image to 3D and pull the image right in. So that's pretty convenient. Um, so I'm going to go with the prism model like I have in some previous videos. I'm going to go for uh, high detail, uh, high geometry, and set a face limit of 50,000. These are um, settings that I've used previously that have tended to work uh, pretty well for me. So let's see how the model turns out. And at first glance, this is looking pretty solid. Um, you know, the geometry is good. Even the textures are looking really solid. Um, it has this nice little uh, viewer settings here where you can kind of play around with the materials, turn PPR on and off, change the roughness and the metalness. So I like to um, tone down the, the shininess there a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm liking this model so far. Uh, but as we get around to the back, you'll see there's an issue. So she's got a braid sticking out of her back and the other one's going into this pouch on her belt. And that's going to be a nightmare to clean up in Blender. I don't want to deal with having to try and fix that geometry. So I thought, you know what, um, we've got a good image to start with, but maybe um, we can use the uh, image editor that's also built into 3D uh, Studio to kind of adjust the um, image a little bit. So right now you can see, uh, you know, there's that braid in the back and it's kind of almost like inside of that uh, the belt pouch there. So you can go back to the dashboard here and then I'm opening up the image that I made. And on the left here, you can see there's this customize button that you can click that allows you to edit images. So basically what this is, is you can describe the changes that you want with text, 
and then it'll modify the existing image. So uh, I'm just kind of typing out a little bit of a detail here. So I want to get the rid of the long braided hair. Um, I want it to be shorter and remove the uh, belt pouches from, from her belt. Um, and you can click this improve button and it'll actually uh, clean up your prompt and make it a lot more descriptive. Um, so I gave that a try as well. And then let's generate the images and see what it comes up with. So it did get rid of the belt pouches. Um, the braids are kind of all over the place. I had to go back and forth with it quite a few times to kind of get exactly the look that I was going for. But uh, eventually I got to this point where the hair is a little bit shorter and it's got a shorter braid. But um, the perfectionist in me wanted this to be just right because I knew the problem with the braid was going to be animation and it would get stuck on the character's back. Um, so this is a little trick I use um, often when I'm doing image generation and image to 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and save this image um, to my hard drive. And then I'm going to pop this open in GIMP. And basically um, go ahead and edit this braid out of here and make her hair a little bit shorter. Uh, this is obviously a pretty crude manual way of doing this, but I've just found it to be much more efficient than trying to edit geometry after the fact or um, trying to get the uh, tool to refine it exactly the way I want it. So just really, you know, a little bit of cleanup, just a few minutes in GIMP is that that's really all it takes. Um, you can save that image out and now we're gonna head back to the image to 3D and uh, go ahead and generate it again with the same settings that we had uh, before. So once that generates, you can see hair looks great. It's not super long. Um, it's not gonna get stuck on her back or her neck or anything like that. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. Now the texture, um, it looks okay. There's a few little artifacts that probably need a little bit of cleaning up. So we'll go ahead and go into the texture painter here. Um, <clears throat> again, you can spend as much or as little time in this as you want. I tend to focus mostly on uh, the head and the hair and the ears um, just to try and get some of those uh, facial features looking a little bit cleaner. And uh, you'll see I'm doing a quick sweep of um, the rest of her body just to kind of get those textures um, looking a little bit nicer. Um, you know, they, they came out okay, but there's a few little artifacts and a few little things that are worth kind of scrubbing out. Now, if I was making this for a pr production ready type of game, obviously you'd want to spend quite a bit more time cleaning that up. Now the next thing I want to do is the uh, auto rigging feature that's kind of in beta right now for 3D AI Studio. So I clicked on the texture paint and unfortunately I've been getting this error uh, with 3D AI Studio. Whenever I do a texture paint and click on it, it gives me that. But the good news is um, there's a workaround here. It's really easy. Just download the GLB file and go to quick utilities and rigging animation and then just upload it. So uh, that seems to work fine. And um, once you have that loaded into the rigging and animation tool, um, you can go ahead and click the run analysis, which will analyze your model. And so for this first pass, I'm gonna try V1 and you can choose between GLB and FBX. So we're gonna do FBX cause that works best with Unity. And then we'll choose the Mixama rig and uh, let's see how this turned out. So I got another error here, um, but the good news is again, in the bottom right there, um, there is a download button. So you can uh, still grab the uh, produced FBX. This gets saved on your dashboard too. So it, you didn't lose it. it. It just throws an error there for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull this into Unity now. So I'm making a little folder in my project tray to pull the FBX file into. And so this is the one that I downloaded. Now you'll notice uh, it's kind of small in size. It's only uh, two megabytes. I also have that uh, GLB file that actually has the texture in it. That's the reason it's so small is because it doesn't actually have the texture file with it. So I'm going to pull the GLB um, into the project as well so I can pull the texture out of that and apply it. But first, um, if you're importing a GLB into Unity, you need to install the GLT fast uh, package. So that's just uh, com.unity.cloud.glt fast. This is just uh, needed to tell Unity how to import the GLB files that come out of 3D AI Studio. So once I get that um, installed and compiled, you'll see that GLB file in the project tray will magically come to life and be visible. Okay, so next I'm gonna duplicate out the um, material here. 
out of the, the GLB file so that I can apply it to the FBX file. And then I'm gonna select the FBX, click on the materials tab, and then just drag that material um, right in and click apply. That's really all you have to do. Um, if you're gonna delete the GLB, you're also gonna to wanna to duplicate that image out of the GLB file just so that you don't lose it. Um, but that's basically it to get that applied. So now we added some terrain to the scene and let's drag our FBX model in and take a look and see how it looks inside of Unity. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So the next thing we wanna do is test out some animations with this. So back into the package manager, we're um, going to go ahead and install our uh, Kevin Iglesias free animation pack. I use this very frequently for a lot of my scenes. Uh, this is free on the Unity Asset Store, so you can go ahead and grab it. They have um, human animations, they have combat animations, uh, things like that. So once we get those animations into the scene, I'm going to look for the idle animation. And I'm just going to make a duplicate of this and copy it over to the player folder that I had there. What you can do, like I just did, is drag that animation directly onto the model and that will create an animator controller and assign it to her automatically with the uh, animation that she dragged as the default. So in this case, um, it made her default animation idle. So let's drag the model in and take a look at the preview and see that does not look very good at all. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, the V1 uh, version of 3D AI Studios, uh, it almost looks like it's backwards. Um, it's kind of hard to tell here, but uh, in any case, Let's try V2. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit more, more uh, um, featureful. Um, well, you know, well, I understand that these are in beta, so I'm expecting some bugs and some weirdness, but I wanted to give this a full try to see if we could get the whole pipeline up and running. So um, again, here I got that error, but you can go ahead and download the FBX and it works just fine. And uh, then I'm going to go and pop back over into Unity and um, pull that one in. And then we'll see uh, what the animation looks like with the V2 skeleton uh, skeletal rigging in place. So we go ahead and drag that into our preview window. Uh, whoops, we forgot to do something. Um, we need to actually, uh, let me see here. We need to select the object and, or the model and then change the animation type to humanoid. So go ahead and click that. And then let's take another look here. Okay. This is definitely looking a lot better than V1. Um, I, I don't see any major defects just on the idle animation here. It doesn't look too bad at all, actually. Uh, let's let's test some other ones out. So let's try um, maybe like the run animation. So let's go ahead and select that here real quick and see what that looks like. All right. Um, yeah, that looks pretty solid, actually. Uh, let's zoom in here a little bit. The fingers looked a little weird, but yeah, for the most part, I, I think it worked pretty well. So let's uh, actually go ahead and apply the material. And so the next thing uh, we're going to do here is take a look at the rigging. So you can do this by clicking rig and then configure to see where the uh, bones ended up when it did the rigging. And taking a look at this, uh, it actually looks pretty solid. Uh, we'll zoom in here on the fingers a little bit. Uh, so the fingers, um, not perfect. You know, it looks like they didn't reach the tips. But uh, the, uh, the legs and the spine and the shoulders all look to be positioned pretty well. So uh, V2 did a pretty decent job here. So the last thing I want to do here is actually uh, compare the rigging between Mixamo and the V2 of 3D AI Studios. So uh, first thing I'm doing actually is I'm pulling our GLB file into Blender here. And I'm going to export that as an FBX. I've run into some issues in 3D AI Studio when exporting FBX directly uh, from the app itself. You, you can um, change formats to FBX, but when I upload those to Xamo, I get an error that you can't map your existing skeleton. You could see it there for a second. So I just manually converted the GLB to FBX and that worked totally fine. So um, we'll go ahead and rig it up here like we usually do in Mixamo. And uh, as usual, Mixamo does a fine job here. And then we'll go ahead and download that uh, FBX with the, uh, the pose in it. And then bring it back over here into Unity. And 
uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the rig again um, inside of this one. So uh, you could, like I said before, we'll make this humanoid again, and then we'll go into the rig tab and uh, click configure and take a look and see how the Mixama rig looks. So clearly the, the legs and the hip and all that look um, appropriate, kind of like we laid out um, with the markers there. And the fingers are also pretty solid. Looks like um, they could be stretched out a little bit, but definitely a little better than the V2 of 3D AI Studio. So I think Mixamo wins this one um, for sure. I mean, that's what it's built for, so it's not surprising. Of course, I understand 3D AI Studio's tools, at least the rigging and animation, are uh, still in beta mode. So that'll do it for this deep dive. This was my first time trying out 3D AI Studio's text-to-image, image editing, and rigging tools. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed with how far the full pipeline has come. There's still a lot of room for improvement, of course, but it's a really solid way to go from an idea in your head to a fully rigged, animated, and game-ready 3D model. I'd love to hear what tools you're using out there. If there's something you think deserves a deep dive for comparison, drop it in the comments. There's so many good options now, it's hard to keep track. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss the next one. See you next time. Bye.